Here we are. We are live yet again. Bitcoin on the pump, hitting 72,600. I thought it was a good time that we go live, run through the, the data from today, go through the end of week data from last week, and of course, discuss with everyone in the live stream what's going on in this space. And uh, I want to take a big look at altcoins as well. It's been some time since we've looked at the altcoins. So uh, yeah, get ready. Have your if you're if it's evening for you like it is here in Australia, a nice 7:30 p.m. for all of us on the East Coast now. The daylight savings has finally ended. Uh, maybe get yourself a nice little cup of tea, or if you prefer the beers. And if you're just starting to wake up, uh, let me look at my. I don't have my timings here. If you're starting to wake up on the East Coast of West. Then uh, I guess you need a coffee. I was trying to get my times up here to see what time it is over there. Someone let me know. Here we go. Uh, East Coast, 5.30 in the morning. Who is up on the East Coast of the US? Central Mountain. It's going to be pretty early over there, but at least the Europeans are awake. Lunchtime in Europe. Yep, sounds about right. So let's have a look. Uh, turn this off. Run this through. Boom. Okay, cool. Nice stuff. Hit the likes, subscribes, all that sort of thing. Um We've got plenty of price ranges to check out. We've got to look at Sydney, 7.30, let's go. And some uh, live streams here. Please check out USDT. I'll check out the chart of USDT for you. Sounds like a good one. Um, 9.30, past your bedtime. Sounds about right over there in New Zealand. 10.30 a.m. in London. So you guys will just be waking up. I'm joking. 5.30 a.m. Good to see you guys in from the East Coast. All right, let's uh, let's throw some charts up and go through some information. Here we go, BTC. All right, so these are the levels that we've been watching now for several days. We are into our twenty fifth day underneath the old all time high. Price targets to the upside were a flip of seventy two thousand five hundred. Uh, if you want to chat in the chat, make sure you have subscribed and then you can start chatting straight away. I'll do some Q and A after, um, main thing I want to look at here are the price targets that we were looking at for some sort of some flip price targets to the upside. If we're to break to a new all time high, and then also any sort of fake out or the same thing, a bull trap, same sort of thing here. So what we want to look out for if this is to occur, because the same thing has happened in 2021. <clears throat> so I had a video scheduled for now, but essentially I wanted to go through th uh, the same thing in this video because of course, two hours in crypto is like two weeks. And when I recorded the video, Bitcoin was at 69,900. And now here we are at 72 and a half thousand or, or hitting that mark of 72 and a half thousand. So already the damn thing's out of date. <clears throat> so 72 and a half thousand was the gotcha bar. That was this one right here. And look, the meaning of the gotcha bar in short term, uh, in, you know, in short is essentially it captures the late longs. So a lot of people got in late. The hype was ridiculous. We know how ridiculous it was in mid-March, hitting 70K, 73, 74K, lots of people in late. Drake was posting about it, uh, posting about Michael Saylor and Bitcoin. Like how, how ridiculous is that? And here we are at similar prices. Uh, Drake's not posting about that again. But um, essentially, that captures the late longs in the market, like a gotcha, which then freaks out those who had got in late. Leverages get destroyed left and right, you know, the, the longs and the shorts. And of course, we get a bit of a, um, well, we got a correction here. We had our three days down, which signaled that this correction was probably going to be longer than anything that we had recently seen from the run-up. And the run-up was from the ETF correction low. Now, that previous correction lasted about 31 days from the top until it broke out into a new fresh high. So this could be a little faster than that one. So there's the top. The breakout to a new fresh price was, oh, 30, yeah, 32 days. So a day over a month, okay? 32 days. We are now sitting at, into our 25th day. So this could be a little bit quicker than that one, which for a bull trap for the bull market Sure, you go to high prices, but at what cost? So I know everyone loves the thought of this thing just absolutely blasting off and never coming back. I get it. Most of us, well, hopefully, are fully invested. Let's hope that happens, right? But 
the same thing happens time and time again. Every time you see these markets not recuperate long enough, then it's only a matter of time before you start to see it come back down and fill in all of the price ranges that um, that it basically just shot straight through. You can look at it from the previous cycle as well. You know, this thing just ran ballistically up. And yeah, it took a couple of years in some cases to come back down and fill in all that space that it just uh, skyrocketed from, you know, that little gap through there. It had it took a little while, but some of them happened sooner. You can see it came back down and filled in that gap straight after the top. Uh, so essentially, it's the same sort of thing happens time and time again. I'm not getting all bearish on this. We've got to bring the positive vibes. We've got a lot of new people into the space. Uh, maybe you're drinking beers. You don't want to hear about the... Um, the possibilities of either up or down. So I'm just going to stick with the prices here. We get closes above 72,500. That's going to be much stronger for the move forward. Even though I don't think the market's had enough time here, it just means we'll probably see uh, a test of these higher prices sooner rather than later. Like nothing really too uh, phenomenal about that. So the phenomenal thing for me is what happens if uh, Bitcoin's able to break through the top here. What happens if it's able to break through 73,800, set a new all-time high again today, tomorrow, whatever? Where does that next price point come in? So I'm looking towards $78,400 as a 50% target for the repeat of that range. That is the important part here if Bitcoin's able to get there. So that would then lead to what happens next. If we get to the 78K, uh, 78,400 level, if it gets rejected and comes back under those highs, then like my title from uh, the video today, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't, or, or the title that is, not the video, uh, essentially looking at a topping pattern similar to 2021, early 2021, but just waiting if anyone's listening or not, I'm not saying it's the final top. So we've got to pay attention to whether it's a breakout, a, a bull trap, or is this thing actually going to keep going and not come back to the 60K levels? This thing takes time to play out. And there's a lot of people that are just, well, I still think there's a lot of people um, expecting it just to continue up, continue to blow off. And that's that. Um, yeah. So some people think the final top is in. I don't think the final top is in. So um, yeah, I'm not on the side of Dave here thinking the final top is in. But I think there's still more. To, we still need to see what happens from this point, whether we do get the closes above 72 and a half. And then is it able to slice through 78,400? So I want to come back to this and look at some of the fractals from 2021. And then also as the market broke through into previous all time highs as well. But uh, I just want to have a look at a few things first. Here we go. This is the vote from earlier on. I just posted this on Twitter. We hit, we're at 70K at the time. So what do you think happens first? 80,000 or 60,000 at the time? I mean, it was roughly this, two thirds to 80, one third to 60. Let's wait and see what happens there. And because the day was starting off slow, I thought a good old quote here from everyone's best friend, George Soros, um, about the markets. And it works in both ways. So I think this is going to be a good one. Should we shoot up? and take out the new all-time highs. I'm looking for someone's quote here. Let's go. I'm rich again. Exactly. This sort of thing here, which I know, you know, we're just having a bit of fun here online, 7.30 at night or 5.30 in the morning for you guys on the East Coast of the US, or maybe you're in Europe having your lunch. So the market, if investing is entertaining, which of course, most of us come to YouTube for entertainment. Hopefully most of us are here for education, but if you're here just for entertainment, you know the channels to go to, the ones that sort of hype you up and get you going on Bitcoin all the time, telling you it's, uh, you know, to keep buying every altcoin you can see. Um, if investing is entertaining, if you're having fun, you're probably not making any money or pro like eventually you won't be making any money. Good investing is boring. So that's, I reckon that's a fantastic quote for these sort of periods. The bull markets when things are going crazy, or if we were going sideways and it's boring, you know, it gives you an idea of both. Um, on that note, Bitcoin news. Why is this thing going up? What's going on? How this halving will impact uh, will impact Bitcoin? Of course, halving is 12 days away, thereabouts. Everyone's still thinking this could be the chance. We're going to see 
bigger prices, it's never going to come back to these levels, et cetera. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens from this point. Uh, but yeah, in terms of any sort of news, I haven't seen anything come through in the last couple of hours. That's essentially what's happened to Bitcoin in the last couple of hours. I'm going to enter the hourly chart here. Uh, essentially from 5 p.m., so 5, 6, 7, we're into our third hour now, just basically straight up from 69,800. Now having a peak here at 72,006. Um, as I said, I'm going to come back to this because we have touched 72.5K, but of course, in my style of analysis, it depends on the close. We want to see the daily close, which is going to come up tomorrow. So at least another, let's have a look, 14 hours away. So we don't know if it's going to be a breakout, confirmed breakout, or if it's going to be a fake out yet. And we'll need multiple closes as well. So that's in terms of the news. The recent news, you know, from a few days ago now, South Korean party pledges access to US Bitcoin ETFs. If you know anything about South Koreans, or at least what we're told and what we see in terms of actual crypto volume, like the exchange volume, they're degenerates when it comes to gambling and trading Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I mean, it's like Australians and a sports betting app. They're both they're both morons either way. You know, you're just gambling on sports betting apps or gambling in the markets. But one way or another, the money comes from somewhere and they love throwing the money into the markets. So that's a big one for Bitcoin at some stage whenever this actually happens, if it actually happens. Of course, it's uh, uh, it's voting time over there in South Korea or it will be. Parl Parliament polled due April 10th in Asia's fourth largest economy, crypto loving South Korea. Yeah, massive, massive, massive stuff there. All right, so... Uh, back to Bitcoin quickly because I've got a few other things to get through with the stock markets. Interest rates, huge news on the interest rates before I get to some of your, uh, we'll get into some Q&A. And it's been going that way with the interest rates and our everything bubble. Of course, my overall macro view is markets in a macro bull market. I was banging on about this through twenty late 22, second half of 22, 2023, I thought people were just going to get super sick of hearing me talk about how bullish I was on the markets. And now we're at these high prices. They're like, why aren't you on as bullish? I'm like, well, the time to buy was at the lows. Anyway, <laughs> where we currently sit for Bitcoin, Bush and higher, 72,100, top here, 72,600. Uh, just a few bucks away now from the all-time high. So let's look at the current price, 2.2% away from a new all-time high price. As I said before, 50% level is going to be a big one to get through. And then a 100%, stick with me here, a 100% repeat of that range from the entire cycle of 2019 to 2021 projected from this cycle's low takes us out to about $81,000. So that's a 100% move. Can it get through that? Why not? Why can't Bitcoin get through $80,000? I think there's a very good chance. Does it happen now in April? That's my next question. I'm not sure about April because of what we have looked at before with the multiple straight months up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six months in this swing of higher highs, higher lows. And we've only seen this once or twice in the past. We've seen a couple of sevens. In a, in, a, in a row as well. Uh, obviously, depending on which chart we're looking at, there's a 10 just back here, but on other charts, it's not 10 in a row. Essentially, what I'm looking at here is price going up without putting a lower low in for the month. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what others might be looking at is this green month here for September. That's seven green months. Should we remain here until the end of the month, 22 days to go, 22 and a half days? Well, that would be our eighth green month which has never happened before for BTC. Could it happen? Of course. I, I don't know. I don't hold any of the keys to this side. I'm merely just looking at the probabilities here. And at one point, uh, the previous cycle, April 2021, was one, two, this is it back here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It was into its seventh green month as well, but then turned red towards the end of the month. So I know it's easy to get really hyped up now. I'm hyped up longer term. I'm just cautious when moves like this occur and there's a few a few signals saying well it could go to new all-time high prices but are you really in the game for it going from 
say 74 is the top, 74 grand, then going to 76, 78, 80 grand. Like, is that really something to be super excited by? Maybe it is. You tell me. If you're trading on leverage with 100x, maybe it's an exciting time for you. But I'm just looking at just the probabilities here. It's extended. It could go to eight. We could get a green. We could get a close, uh, you know, 78, 76, whatever it is, a close above the current price uh, where it sits. And um, then consolidate at higher prices, maybe put in a, a red month, which um, uh, doesn't necessarily mean a red month has to go and have a huge correction. It could just do what April did. See here? There's there's April, just a, a swing down, a lower close in the open. That's it. Um, I'm not saying that May would have to follow, but maybe you do see some sort of red month like that. And then we just sort of trend sideways, like what's happened in the past. You can see here in 20, uh, 2020, happened again through here, 2015. You've got a couple of red months in there, but essentially the market's just going sideways. And then another couple of red months where the price range was within the previous month's price range anyway. So you had a small red month, a larger one here, and essentially still within it. So to me, any of these things that, ha that happen, whether it's the current low of 18% correction, 25, 30, well, it doesn't matter in my opinion because this is not the final top. Uh, until we see a breakdown and um, essentially if this is the point here, then I'd want to see a breakdown below 48 to, to say that this is the final top. I'm not going to entertain that now because it's um, it throws a few people off not understanding certain pivot points in the market. I've looked at 48K for a long time as being one of those major critical pivot points. Pivot points, if Bitcoin was to break down from that, well, then that is the top and that's how you know. You have to wait for it to get back under there. But for now, there's no signs to say that it would get under that point and close under there for uh, for a particular month. So everything's still pointing to the upside regardless of, um, to me, any sort of corrections. We have also looked at, I'm not sure if it's on these charts here. Yes, it is. Here's our monthly chart. Let's turn off some of this volume to get rid of some of the noise on the chart. We've also looked at turning points in the market cycle. All right, so let's get rid of some of these so we can see. The turning points within the cycle itself, so low to high, we've seen several turns before the all-time high for that cycle or before the top for that cycle. I'm rephrasing the term there because... Many think that the end of a cycle must be an all-time high, but I don't think that would be the case moving forward. What have I done here? Change the language. All right. So I don't think that would be the case moving forward is that a cycle top does not necessarily have to... Let me get this out. A cycle top doesn't necessarily have to go to a new all-time high in the future, but it could still be a cycle top because we measure the cycles from the low to the low and where the top comes in tells you whether it's a strong cycle or a weak cycle. So anyway, from that, there's your cycle. We have a June turn in 2019. We had an April turn in 2021. Then you had your final peak in November. Even this cycle so far, we've had a top in April and then another top in June, July. So what happens if we do something similar to what just occurred last year? We had a pivot in April, 60 days down. It ran up again. Another pivot in June, July, because there was a, a rough uh, double peak there. Uh, what's that? About two and a half weeks apart, June, July. Then it had another 60 days down, and then it went on its mega run. And so each of these previous cycles, there's a June turn, there's a March turn, there's a June turn. Finally get into that peak in quarter four. What about the next cycle? Oh, cycle before that. Well, ran up um, from this October uh, 2010, a June turn, an April turn. And then the final peak out here in November, December. So each of the cycles have had that quarter, uh, well, qu quarter one is obviously March, but you sort of got your quarter two because it comes in March or April or June-ish type area, okay? So I'm just looking at what's happened in the past. We get those, those particular runs. It's already happened in this cycle as well. So maybe it's going to be similar. Maybe we still see a March or maybe an April top where it does push a little higher has a turn, comes back, pulls back for a bit, and then we start to go again. But each of these pullbacks potentially, I'm also hesitant to say that, but maybe they, they get a little bit shorter, which is what leads into these peaks. So the pullbacks in time, in days, typically get shorter as you lead into the top, and then you usually get a big washout, like what happened there, 50%. 
And then this correction here was two months again before we got into that next final top shows over from that point. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at here with these turning points, especially as we come into the time frames here you know you're seven green months up we haven't seen eight before maybe we see another maybe we do see an eight and then also these um these swings as well we haven't seen too many swings that have lasted into their seventh month that would put us i've shown data on that before in one of the other charts here if we were to get seven months higher highs higher lows that would drop us down to uh, a seventh seven percent of the time that's happened so very very rare um let me have a look at Bitcoin now and these fractals. So I want to have a quick look at that before we get into some of the other data, some Q&A and some, some altcoins. Okay, so just a couple of these here. We got the fractal from 2021. These are always fun to play with. March peaks, bottoms here in late March, another turning points here, late March, early April, another pivot down, push to a new fresh high. Okay, how much was that in terms of a percentage from the top to the next top? Where's the top there? About four or five percent. Let me move this out of the way and get it something a little bit clearer. So as I said, pointed here, not a final top. So relax, I'm not saying it's a final top. There it is, five percent. So the April top broke the March top by roughly five percent, had a couple of a few closes above, and then swiftly reversed back underneath those prices. Enough to excite everyone again then the correction and then it had a lower top very weak lower top here in may and then collapse from that point so let's um let's take this fractal to today's standings and just have a quick look at that so somewhere around i'm using that march top there if maybe we do something similar like that right top correction you can see basically just got it almost it's it's every single day but it's almost lined up to that a little correction here it's had a little dump into it and now we're sort of pushing higher again i would be very cautious if you were to see the price push higher for a few days and then fall back underneath the all-time high which is seventy three thousand eight hundred dollars. if you're looking for a one-liner to take away from this entire thing be very cautious if you see the price push higher and then reverse back underneath the old all-time highs. It happened. It's not the only time that it's happened in 2021, but if you don't want to be made to make this stream two hours long, uh, you can basically go back and check all the previous highs, not just for Bitcoin, but it's something that happens across all markets. Once they push higher and then reverse back underneath their all-time high, that's when some of that weakness starts to feed into the market. And it doesn't happen the following day. It can take days like it did in the last cycle. Big move down. You can see the correction happen. It pushes up again and it just sucks everyone in for another month or so. A month. I mean, in crypto, that it's it's unbelievable. People would think um, a month is like a whole year. So that's what I'm saying there. I'm not going to keep repeating it. You see it break higher. Be cautious if it's to come back underneath those prices. All right, so that's for Bitcoin. But as I said, overall, there's nothing to say that we're... we're finishing up this cycle yet. There's still plenty of room to the downside it could correct to. Everything's still sweet. So that's a look at BTC. I did have a few other um, fractals to look at, but I think you guys get the point and probably want to move on to some other things now. S&P 500, before I get into the altcoins, <clears throat> it's also trending basically sideways. I mean, uh, that was Friday's bar. In terms of the price from Thursday's close, it's basically the same price as it was back on the 4th of March. So that's, it's a bit of a grind here for the S&P. Not too much going on, but it still feels like it's it's not ready for a huge correction yet. Um, I'm, not, I'm not in the camp that this thing is going to uh, correct down double digits and everyone's going to get their, their entry in here and it's all going to be good and it's going to climb back up again. I was looking for a pause or a correction in the first half of 2024. I thought this might come in March or April. Um, where the 21st of March was that peak, and then the 1st of April was the next peak. I mean, it's only a few percent anyway, so could have been the previous ones. We don't know yet, the 2.6%. But the interesting thing with the S&P 500, yeah, I don't want to do that. 
here we go. Save. We'll go to the four year so, uh, my four year cycle charts. So I looked earlier on the S and P five hundred <clears throat> and showed this quite a lot, um, leading into the, the new all time high for BTC. Just waiting for it to load, and essentially each of the cycles, um, the S and P five hundred had pushed into a new fresh high, and then Bitcoin followed. This time was no different. That white line is the old all time high for the S and P. It pushed into a new all-time high in January, and then Bitcoin moved to a new all-time high in March. <clears throat> Something that is slightly different, but remember, we've only got three data points. So when people get really excited saying this time is different, you're working off three data points. Come on. So we need more time for uh, more of the options to occur. But when we look at what has happened in the past with other markets and similar sort of patterns. You can see them play out time and time again. So uh, Bitcoin pause correction at first uh, SPX all-time high. Have we really seen that? Not particularly. So it's into its first all-time high and we want to see the SPX correct or at least pause here. And that might also put a pause on for BTC. We've seen it in the past before with each of these other cycles. I've gone through this in other videos, just looking at how the... the um, the S&P 500 has pushed to fresh highs in the case of going back <laughs> to the first cycle in 2012 and it goes to new all-time highs, has a correction, the second new all-time high pump, that's when everything goes together. So at the moment, we are definitely in a stronger position than what we have been in previous cycles, which I suspect <clears throat> is due to the 18.6 year cycle. I'm starting to lose my voice here. So in terms of the 18.6 year cycle, we're in this last stage here, um, heading up into this peak. Now, this doesn't move very often in terms of the yellow dot because it is 14 years up and roughly four years down. It could be anywhere between 17 to 23 years, but at the moment, there is nothing to suggest that this cycle is going to end early. And how the uh, this is the real estate and economic cycle looks like it's going to continue into 2025 and 20 or 2026 so somewhere around 25 26 for a peak and then some sort of correction um major crash from that point which lasts multi years or or potentially a year and a half longer than what we have seen in the move from uh, roughly 2009 to 2012 which is where the house um the uh, housing and economic cycle bottomed not the stock market but the house and economic uh, cycle <clears throat> so, yeah, because we're, we're coming in, into this final year where things start to accelerate, it's your everything bubble, winner's curse is what um, uh, Phil Akil and um, Fred Harrison have, have termed it, which you can see down here. Uh, that's essentially where everyone is betting on that the markets are always going to go up because they've seen it always go up over the course of you know, 14 or 15 years. They've forgotten what has happened prior to that. And that's how we get to this point. Um, all right, so let's have a look at some... Uh, oh, no, I'll, I'll leave this one for a moment, just looking at Solana here, Solana BTC, and I'll look at some other uh, cryptos in a moment. But I just want to look at the interest rates. Now, I put this up in January, you guys probably see me talk about it a little bit. The main thing I, I bring this up for is that the masses, as I said here, uh, we're all expecting an interest rate cut every single month. And I wish I'd got this screenshot a little earlier because a couple of days earlier, this was basically every single month they were looking for an interest rate cut. And I suggested that we probably weren't going to see interest rate cuts in 20, well, <clears throat> nowhere near as many as what the masses were hoping for or um, the, the critics were expecting or the analysts or the professionals. Absolutely wrong. So wrong on this. I don't get it. See, like June cut, then hike, then cut. I don't mean, I don't know whether you're joking around or serious, but this is what a lot of people were expecting. They're expecting all these interest rate cuts. And now, which I just saw today, we talked about there's not going to be as many. That's what this post goes on about. Uh, and I've been posting it every few days. Um, I think I even got some in, in February as well. There's April, there's March. Where's the last one I just did? It went down to six cuts, then five, then four, then three, which was three cuts for a while. And just today, we're down to two cuts for the year. There's December. And now you've got one cut, two cuts. That's it. So we're only looking for two cuts. Um, 
potentially we get no cuts. Well, let's see. Maybe there's one cut and then, it, then they bring it back up because it just spurs the market on way too hard. Now, the reason I think for this is well, asset prices are up. There's um, a lot of money waiting on the sidelines to go back into the markets. Uh, everything's skyrocketing. You've got real estate going up in desirable areas. Yes, maybe your area isn't going up. Maybe it's not desirable. I can't help you there. But essentially, when you look at the overall data for the US, it's going up. <clears throat> home builders stocks are flying. If you looked at any home builder stocks, they've been flying since those lows in 2022. So there is still more left in this tank. And I think there's still going to be plenty more. That's my premise, premise, uh, my theory. Let's go with that for the everything bubble and why we're still going up. There's just, there's too much going on. And they, I don't think they can cut these because there is the asset prices are still skyrocketing. So it's not going to be a good thing. Charles says, if they cut, the economy is in trouble. I don't know. Is it doesn't mean it's in trouble. Uh, how about no cuts? They want the world to burn. I don't know. I, I, I think that's all kind of, I think that's all kind of nonsense. Yeah, just, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's YouTube. You guys can joke around in the comment section. I just think that's garbage. It's not cutting because the, um, the asset prices, everything is way too high. Well, it's been going up. Whether it's way too high, that's up to the market to decide. So anyway, that's the interest rates. I think it's probably going to keep pushing to the right and we're probably going to see less and less cuts. Even if there is to be, if, if, if there was a cut, then we'd see how the market responds and then go from there. Um, okay, we've looked at this <clears throat> altcoins. Let's have a look at some altcoins quickly and the weakness in altcoins while the market is moving. Bitcoin, let's bring this over here so I can see where we're going. Bitcoin's sitting at 71.8. All right, so we've peaked at 72.6. We haven't seen any higher prices yet. So I've got the, the altcoins against their Bitcoin value. Stop me if you don't know what's going on with with BTC values against your altcoin. So I'll, I'll make this really quick, show you a couple of strong examples and probably a lot of weak examples, unfortunately, for altcoins. <clears throat> so, so Solana Bitcoin, it's at its 50% level of the entire range. Now, this chart is essentially the crypto against Bitcoin value. You want to see this going up so that it's outperforming Bitcoin. That's the point of it. If you're not outperforming Bitcoin, then why are you holding that coin? I'm going to pick on XRP. People get really triggered. And why don't you pick on something else? Because no one cares about anything else as much as they care about XRP, which is one of the worst cryptocurrencies here. It's hit new fresh lows against its Bitcoin value. So I'm showing you a chart of something that just keeps going down, even though the masses think, well, the, the lovers of XRP, just hope for the best. Now, I keep scrolling in and out to show you just how far this thing keeps going. And it just keeps trickling away to lower lows. Now, most of them don't look at this chart and they look at the USD chart and they're like, look at this. It's in a consolidation pattern of six years going nowhere. Um, it's basically the same price as it was back in 2018. And in the case of XRP, even gold outperformed this. That is something to to, to laugh at. Like if you are investing something that <clears throat> has, is as high a risk as XRP, has nothing, no use anymore, ever did, and you're not beating gold, there's something wrong with you. Like it doesn't make sense. And that goes for all cryptos that end up in this state. I know it sort of separates people and you get people jumping on and all that sort of stuff. They love it or they don't love it. Don't worry, XRP to $1 soon to $10, $20. Like the only thing that consolidates for years like this would be commodities. And I would say 99.99% .99 of people here do not trade commodities. You're not trading cotton, soybeans, um, orange juice, pork bellies, all this sort of stuff. You know, no one's trading it here. That's the sort of thing that goes on these long streaks, not XRP, which has nothing. And it's uh, what are they, they? They're talking about doing a stable coin. I mean, that's just another cash grab because it's, it's useless. What's the point of XRP if you're doing a stable coin anyway? <clears throat> anyway, that is a chart you don't want to be a part of. So, with that in mind, you could pick on any other cryptocurrency. Does that look similar? There's uh, VeChain, you know, they have their own armies. Market ran up, had a couple of little pumps here during 
this last couple of quarters and it's basically back down at the same prices as it was. All that means now is that the altcoin is at the same, has had the same gains that Bitcoin has had, gains or losses, because it's basically at the same price against Bitcoin. It's at 63 Satoshis. So roughly around this sort of midpoint here, it's the same thing. Um, what's another one people loved? They loved Matic on a massive, massive downtrend. Breaks down, going to fresh lows. Uh, this is basically the same price as it was in April 2021. So any gains to that point, it's um, it's it's at the same value that uh, it's it's at, sorry it's at its same Bitcoin value as it was three years ago. So if you bought it in April 21 and you held it to now, Bitcoin's done the same gains. That's it. Even if you're up in dollars, it's done the same gains. So to put that to test, uh, let's see. I haven't even looked at this yet. April 2024, Aprilish or May, early May 2021. Matic USD, where was Matic in uh, May 2021? It was at about 80 cents. There it is. A little, few little spikes here, 80, 82. Currently, 90, 93. So basically, it's done nothing for three years. I mean, if you think a 10, 15% gain on three years in crypto is great, <clears throat> I can't help you. Link. So we're looking at so many weak ones here. What I want to see is these altcoins break above at least some sort of shorter term 50% or uh, resistance levels, at least at this stage of the game. You know, if, if we're halfway in, two thirds in, whatever you think you're at in the cycle, you'd want to see your altcoins going above previous resistance. So here are all those resistance levels and you want to see it breaking above holding some strength. Um, that's why I just label all of these down here, garbage and dead charts. Adam, look at that. Just keeps going down. Ada keeps going down. It's not breaking any of these tops. Um, so I go to Solana because it did. You can see it ran up and broke some of these tops. The main thing now is it. I think it needs to hold fifty percent. Well, in terms of in terms of analysis, not what I think. It needs to hold the fifty percent level and continue to consolidate above fifty percent for that next stage of the bull market. That's what you want to see your altcoins do. You don't want to see them break down from previous areas of support at this stage of the cycle. All that would mean is they might make some gains against the USD value, but it's not going to be those mega gains that other altcoins will do when they break through previous resistance, um, basically the final resistance levels. It's like that final boss breaking through. You're on the way to new fresh highs um, <clears throat> or other altcoins that don't even have this previous history. Something like, what have I got? A Prime USD. Prime is at fresh highs here. Well, I mean, it's had a pullback. Uh, yeah, it's had a pullback. It's trying to hold in there. That would be a much stronger position if it's able to hold that level and I'd say around this level here. Now, there's no prices on the chart because I've had to make the chart up myself when you just do prime against Bitcoin value, but that's where you'd want to see your altcoin. You don't want to see it break down too much during this period here. It's fine if it does break down because if Bitcoin goes up, well, altcoins are probably going to get crushed against their BTC values. And if Bitcoin goes down, well, altcoins are also probably going to go down against their Bitcoin values because, well, Bitcoin's a king and people will rush to those if they think the market is going to fall. Um, so that's a that's a stronger one there. Um, what else have I got here? Maybe Pendle. Yeah, Pendle's broken through at this stage. It's, uh, I mean, it's putting in a bit of a, a reversal here. So I'm not saying that this is going to remain where it is, like right there. But there are some more areas further down that could put it in, that could keep it in a reasonable strong position, providing it remains above those um, uh, support and resistance levels. Okay. So that's a look at them there. There's plenty of them to get through. I can't go through all of them. Aptos was a big one at the time, and this thing just keeps, it hasn't broken out of those tops. Now, it's not to say that it can't do it like Ada did in the previous cycle, but you've just got a lot more to work with. You, you, I mean, you, you're battling against a lot more resistance levels on the way back up. It's possible. FET, actually, let's have a look at FET. This, I think, is going to come down to the 50% level, but... This is in a very strong position overall when you look at its entire history. Now, this is when it's released, so I don't really take that into consideration. Um, but essentially, where it sits now, should it come back down to the 
well, it's back on top of all those previous tops. So it's not such a bad place to be. Let's put a straight line in there. There you go. So it's not the worst place in the world to be should we get that next move to the upside. And then you could find this across hundreds, thousands, whatever other AI cryptos you've got going on out there um, that uh, maybe smaller market caps, some, uh, I don't know, degenerate stuff that I don't even know of, okay? So I, I don't know every single million or 2 million altcoins out there. What I do know is the chart itself. So that's the altcoins, what I, what I think is going on. When we have a look at uh, BTC, I mean, it's it still hasn't moved any higher since when we started the stream. One hour, yeah, okay, we started at 7.30. We've been on for about 40 minutes. It's basically sat around the same level, $71,800. So I think it's time, let's take a, a few questions and we'll wrap it up from there. But yeah, essentially, as a recap, it we need a close. We need to close at least above seventy-two and a half thousand. From my own, from from, for me to look at this as being a lot more than just a short-term fake out. So that's what I want to see next at the end of the end of the day. We look at the dailies here. Where are we at? Thirteen hours, forty minutes to go. That's the reason for it. There, seventy-two and a half k. We've looked at fractals. Whereas this could go to a new fresh high. Maybe it goes five percent higher than the current top at 73,800. Where would 5% take us? Look at that. Roughly 77.5, maybe 78,000, getting very close to that 50% level. So it could run up to, to that point or very close to it, similar to what happened in 2021 near that, here we go, not the final peak. There it is, that top there as April broke through March and then reversed. So I'm just saying I'm bullish longer term but uh, I need a, I need more evidence to suggest that or to say that this is going to be a sustained move to the upside, okay? The other thing I brought up in the stream was be cautious if you see these prices run up, probably anywhere between where we are here and sort of 78s to 80, 82K and then reverse back underneath that top. Um, that's going to be a very big warning signal. I don't think the masses will see that because well, prices already run up and they're just sort of hoping and waiting for the best. But yeah, when, when price does break underneath old highs again, then things take a little bit longer to uh, to recuperate and, and go on its next run. Um, <clears throat> we looked at altcoins just then, strong versus weak. Which ones you want to be in? Which ones you want to be positioning yourselves in for that, that next run, whether it's this month, next month, six months from now. I don't know. I don't have the answers to the black side. I just look at the probabilities, as I say, and the patterns here. Um, so yeah, looking at the ones you want to be positioned in compared to the ones you don't want to be positioned in. So if you need to reposition your portfolios, now might be a reasonable time to start doing that. I'm not saying do it all now, but you know, look at, look at it over the next few weeks. And, oh yeah, we just saw Solana news here that I put here, FTX offloads, giant Solana, yada, yada. I think most of us have seen this by now. It's a few days old. Maybe they had enough to scare the market for a short period. Uh, the overall cycle still up. S&P 500 still doing its thing with the other markets also doing their things. New all-time highs across the board. You've hear, heard me talk about that before. We'll get into that in other videos as well. I'll put this onto the Bitcoin chart. Where am I? Here. <clears throat> And then have a look at uh, what um, what lovely comments are coming up over here. Good luck repositioning portfolio with CGT. Well, yes and no. If you're going to get taxed, would you rather be taxed on gains? If you're I, I look, most people are probably trading under the under their personal name rather than in a in a company. So they're not going to be able to or, or trust or whatever. They're not going to be able to distribute those losses elsewhere. I'm not a tax advisor. I don't give tax advice. But um, personally, I would rather be in stronger stuff than weaker stuff. And if you're sort of worried about tax, I mean, there's other ways to get to to work it out. If you're going to lose thirty percent on tax. Isn't that better than losing 50, 60, 70% on something else or, or even worse, missing out on bigger gains from somewhere else if you're you know, that way inclined? You just want to go for those 5, 10, 20 Xs. 
Um, I'd be interested to know, in your opinion, what you think the price of Bitcoin will be in the year 2032. No idea. <laughs> Who the hell knows? I mean, I'm interested to hear what your opinions are and whether you actually would stick to your opinions or it's just some BS floating up in the air. Let me know, guys. What do you think the price is going to be? I, I don't know anyone that's got it right. Even those, even the people everyone listens to, like Kathy Wood and Michael Saylor and all that, they've got no idea. I know Michael Saylor doesn't really... Oh, actually, I think he has said stuff about Bitcoin before in terms of price predictions. I think he said Bitcoin's going to be better than, than land. I'm pretty sure he said that at the Australian Crypto Conference. I mean... That's just, that's mental. For someone so, so smart, I think that's just absolutely mental. Uh, I hope you guys have been hitting up the like button on the stream too. I haven't checked any of that. <laughs> click it, don't click it. I don't know. It's at 500 now. So let's go for 1,000 or 2,000. There's a couple of thousand people on live. Uh, next, let's have a look. Solana will still pump. Yeah, I mean, I think most of these things are probably going to pump. But I just prefer to put things into the stronger portfolios than the weaker ones. That's all. Do you think it's possible for an alt season to happen prior to rate? I don't, I don't see the relevance with rate cuts. I know it might be a, um, a bit of a theory, but what's the point of looking at rate cuts with this? I mean, rate cuts have remained on pause at five and a half percent for months now and we've had many many mini alt seasons and um what in the case of say for an injective and some other ones they've, they've done huge gains what's i don't really see the injective btc that ran up that went mega against btc value obviously it's come back a lot which puts it in a bit of a t t tough position, which is what I said at the time with um, Injective, where it's run really early, like Link last cycle, and then Link didn't do anything the following cycle in terms of BTC value, <clears throat> which is where the gains are. I mean, I, I don't really look at it like that. For me, people were so worried about interest rates, um, them going up, and they thought that that would crash the housing market which was an absolute fallacy we heard about that right interest rates going up no one can afford their mortgages anymore it was all nonsense to keep people blinded and then the markets went up real estate i think we're up to our f i don't know i don't want to be mis misquoted here i read something today it was like 15 straight months up um that's just looking at nationally. US has got several, had several straight months up as well. It's, uh, yeah, the whole interest rate thing, I think people get it way too confused. Does injective BTC look really, really look that bad? Well, yeah, I just, I just showed it there um, a few minutes ago. So I think so. It hasn't, it, it's continued down for a considerable amount of time and it's breaking past 50%. Solana can't break 200 again. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Injective looks weak. If you're in Bitcoin, you can chill. Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin's doing pretty, pretty well. I mean, most people, a lot of people are looking for those huge gains. The problem is they, they, how many people do you know that have got these huge gains, kept them, and then made a life from it you might know one or two i don't know there's not that many of them so i personally i'd rather just keep it safe and steady i mean i've been going since early 2017 in crypto and it's just been multiple cycles and it just keeps building and building and building and then you get that big effect that that big snowball effect once you've been doing it for so long it just yeah you get the idea when you look at the compounding thing and you know continuing with it Would you rather lose 50% waiting a year if it dumps? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to lose 50, 60%. Like, why not just sell it, rotate into something else? You pay your tax that you need to and move on. <clears throat> Never chase pumps. Yeah, I can agree with that to a certain degree. It depends whether you're a momentum trader or not. But yeah, if you're trying to buy those massive pumps when everyone's talking about it, I mean, 
usually the last to know. There can be profits made from it. Just depends on your time frame. Sixty nine, one seventy. Oh, yeah, we got some of these price targets. Um, I don't know if it's dragging it down or it dragged it up. Anywhere from five bucks to a million. Perfect. I reckon that's a great, uh, <laughs> a great number. I guess four hundred k. Yeah, I mean that's a few more cycles away, right? I mean, and and for how long? Like, would that be the the peak of the cycle? Current Bitcoin halving chart versus the last halving. Uh, we are where have we done the same sort of gains? So coming into the halving, let's say from the cycle low to where we currently sit, roughly 360-ish. There you go, 360-ish to the last halving. This was the halving here in May. We are 100% more. So 220 back then, about 360 now, so about 140% more at that point. I don't measure cycles halving to halving. I think that's... Um, I think that's very, very outdated. Like that's uh, not a great way to look at a cycle, in my opinion. ETH BTC, I mean, that was looking like it had a chance. But as we know, when you're trying to get in earlier with some entries, that it increases the risk of them being wrong. That's what happens with earlier entries. That's why I like entries that are basically breaking out to the upside early on because it's showing momentum. It's showing that there is strength in that trade. So in terms of this, it's near those lows. I think even if it's to break down, you're sort of sitting around those 4 million Satoshis, some sort of support level there. There's no guarantees, of course, <laughs> this is trading. But um, yeah, if it can't hold this level now at the 4.8, then you probably have to look somewhere around four, five, down to four-ish, somewhere in there. It's trying at the moment. It just wasn't able to get there back when we were looking at it in January and February. You had the ETF pump and then you had the, uh, was that Den Denkun? I don't want to get taken offline for that stupid name they gave it. Den Denkun upgrade, Dekun, I don't know. <laughs> some, some names they give it. So yeah, those pumps didn't make it, came back down. Couple more. Hex. Throughout history, how valid is the sell in May go away saying? And what are your thoughts about this? Um, sell in May, the, the theory is sell on the 1st, buy back on the 31st of October. So you buy back on Halloween that's Halloween, right? October. Yep. And then there's some sort of um, Halloween effect and then some other saying they have after that period, the next six months. I don't think that's, a gr from what I looked at last year, it wasn't the greatest theory. It happens a few times and other times it doesn't work. So May, I think I looked at it here. Yeah. Am I showing the right screen? Yep. So this is May. That's, that's obviously going to come up in the next few weeks, of course. Everyone starts to look at selling May go away. This was May in 2023. You could go back over my videos, go back 11 months ago, and I'm, I'm talking about selling May and go away. And I thought looking at the six-month periods, it's more likely that Bitcoin would be higher in, the, in that six-month period than it would be lower. So I wouldn't be selling in May of 2023 and going away and then just coming back and buying lower. And it did work out that you were better to buy then because it only just came through late in October. There's October 31st. So somewhere around 34-ish, 35. So it was at 28 and went to 34. So 6K. 6K in terms of percentage is what, 20-ish percent? Here we go. 20, yeah, about 20%. So it went up 20% in that period. And it was on this, at the start of the breakout, which is where you, you, you get most emotional. It's not like you just come back and buy. 
the emotions picked up here. And then you had all your famous people saying they were short in the market in the 30s and it never came back down. They kept shorting all the way up, got absolutely destroyed. Well, they would have been if any of those trades were real. But um, yeah, anyway, we've talked about that long enough. Let's have a look at something else. So the selling May thing, am I still here? You can still see me. Let me have a look at some of these comments coming up. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be so quick to do that just based on history. But we're at a different stage now. I talked about that last year because of where we sat, um, that the market was had been down for quite some time. So I would rather be holding than not. Whereas now we've been up for seven months we're in, in a straight line and we've been up since November 2022, which is coming up to about 18 months. <clears throat> All right, a couple of other uh, super chats here. Matt Syme, Jason, could you look at chart three lull game five? Um, let's look at some more questions and then we'll see if we've got time for sort of like thoughts on and those sort of things. What's your review about ETH? <clears throat> Let me just clean up this chart. My review about ETH, I think if ETH, I just look at it long term. So let me get some of these lines. If ETH is unable to, in this cycle, break above these tops of the last cycle and consolidate above them, then I would say, ETH is probably going to end up like XRP or ADA or something like that, right? I think it really needs to get above these tops. Now, at the same token, maybe it doesn't and this cycle just keeps going sideways and then it's the next cycle that it takes off. I don't know. That's years away. So it depends what your time frame is. But for now, I, I think ETH needs to get a bit of a run on in the next few months, get back above these tops over this cycle, whether that's 2024 or 2025, I don't know yet and then consolidate above those tops, which are roughly eight and a half million Satoshis. Because if it doesn't, then it's just showing that it's basically either keeping track with Bitcoin at the same price or it's going down against Bitcoin. So it needs to go up against Bitcoin for it to be a worthwhile investment. That's my view on ETH. Whether you want to talk about um, what? Fees and all this sort of stuff. I don't know. Fees are high. People complain about them a lot. If they're trading hundred bucks here and there, fifty bucks for an old coin or whatever, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna chew you up. If you're trading with thousand dollar, two thousand, three thousand, I don't think it makes a big difference. You know, you, you trade with a thousand bucks, say on MetaMask, it's gonna cost you like ten bucks, seven bucks, twenty two bucks. I mean, it's a percent. If you then have to go and transfer it to an exchange, pay your point one percent or point two percent on on an ex centralized exchange, um, and then transfer it to another wallet, like. I mean, you're sort of, you're fighting over a few bucks here. I don't see the big deal unless you sort of, you know, you've, you've got 50 bucks, 100 bucks here and there and you're trying to, um, you know, make these huge gains because, yeah, of course, 10 bucks is going to eat into a lot if you're only using 50 or 100 bucks. AVAX or Litecoin? Uh, is this the new Israeli shekel? Uh, that's a little symbol there. So I've got six shekels. I think that's all of like, Two bucks in Oz, if I remember my conversions. Um, in your opinion, why uh, AVAX over Litecoin any day of the week for now? I don't know. What, don't know what else AVAX is doing, but Litecoin basically rubbish. It, look at the chart of Litecoin; it goes straight down all the time, <laughs> straight down all the time. Yeah, it might not be a bad option there. We'll see. Shekels. What altcoins do I like? I like ones that look strong on their Bitcoin pairings. I showed a couple in here. As long as they're strong against their Bitcoin pairings, that's good. That's good news to me. I don't get involved in the communities. I don't get on discords and and stuff around there. I don't. I don't try and find out any of that. Like I just rather look at it on the chart. I'll listen to a few. Um, uh, I don't know, picks from people and then go through and look at the charts because I know a lot of them don't necessarily look at look at charts either. So I'll just make sure 
that if I'm listening to other picks, then I want to check their charts. You get a wave today. No, no. Hopefully it's it's still good tomorrow. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't have the, the feelings in my jellies yet. Thanks, PJ, PJJ. We hit the one hour mark. Have you guys hit that like button? We're at 750 likes. I'm going to refresh on this. All right, come on, get it to 1,000 likes. We're doing really well here, guys. There's been a lot of thoughts on, a few too many to um, <laughs> to pick up. 1,000, there we go. At this point in the cycle, what percentage of portfolio would you keep in Bitcoin? I switched all my Bitcoin that I bought at 28K into strong alts. The moment it had a monthly close above 69. Uh, that question is always around what type of investor are you? So what is your risk appetite? So it's 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 that's why they always say you can't give investment advice to people because it's like, well, how much are you playing with? What are your goals? That sort of thing. I don't know any of that. And then it'd be different for every person. So you have to come up with, uh, you know, are you playing with a million bucks and you want that to turn into 10 million? And this is like a life savings. So is there a high risk play here and you got a lot of anxiety and stress now? Or is it, well, you know, I had a thousand bucks and it turned into 3000 and I'm just going to throw it into into some strong altcoins and, and hope that they do 10x to go from 3,000 to 30,000. Like, it all depends. Live stream. Thank you, James. Will you ever say what your real name is? Because you're often on a lot of my uh, my streams here. Streams and, and videos, of course. I don't know what your real name is. I have 55 grand in small caps, moon bag. X token. Will I make it? You might. Clint, all right. I thought you were taking the piss with this one. I wasn't going to say it. Clint, all right. Thanks, Clint. Tell us when to take profits. If you're unsure, take profits now. <laughs> That's my best advice. Thank you, Clint from New Zealand. Oh, you're here in the last bull run. Lovely. There's a few of you. What flap? You want to get me some? That would be lovely. I think it's are they the purple ones. I don't know. Lovely. All right, guys. It's been an hour. It's been absolute amazing to have you along. Did we just we drop, jump back up to seventy two k? Okay, so seventy two one top is still seventy two six. Wrap up tomorrow. I want to see this thing close above seventy two and a half k, and that could hopefully attempt us to get to higher prices moving forward or we definitely we if this isn't a fake out you don't want to see you want to see the price hold up if it's not going to be a fake out hold up above 72 and a half hold up above 74 and should it get to the 50 percent level here at 78,400, you don't want to see a rejection back underneath that old all-time high okay so that's the game we're playing here at the moment lower highs coming in Oh, uh, sorry. Higher lows coming in. It's getting late. It's past my bedtime. And the potential for that squeeze to the upside. Unfortunately, I don't have the crystal ball. I don't have the answer. I'm just looking at what's happened in the past. I look at some of the patterns. And essentially, if you do see those sorts of things play out, like 
a little squeeze under, and back under the previous all time high, well, then that leads to higher probabilities of, of that move to the upside being a fake out and then coming back further than what we have seen. This stuff takes time to play out. Should it be that move? So be patient. See how we go. Don't get too excited as our friend George Soros talked about here. If you're investing, if investing is entertaining, if you're having fun, you're probably not making any money. So it goes against our little saying of have more fun to get more done, but we're not talking about that when it comes to our trades. That's outside, that's life, you know the deal. Good investing is boring. And on that note, it's time for bed. Hopefully I haven't put too many of you to sleep. I'll see you guys at the next video real soon. Take care, peace out. And um, yeah, we got some balloons. Love you long time. Cheers, guys.